Hey everybody, and welcome yeah, to cool. Business TV. Uh, this week with John Conroy, and this should be a good one actually because uh, John's sense of humor, he's got a wicked sense of humor, so I'm looking forward to this. But yes, uh, welcome, and um, we've got today, we've got John Conroy, and uh, when John sent his bio through, I must admit, uh, it made me giggle. So John is basically an out-of-work professional athlete, and uh, being as that's never likely to pay the bills, he runs a print marketing business, helping business owners get their message out there regarding using print marketing. Hello, John. How are you? Doing? Are, are, are you looking for athletics work? <laughs> no, no. I've, yeah, I'm not. I'm not that optimistic. <laughs> it's just the stuff I like doing, but I'm never going to get paid for it. <laughs> Wouldn't it be good if you could get paid for doing what you like? Yeah, would it just yeah. Well, in, yeah. In, in, in some ways, I do, Gareth. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you got paid by the mile to run, that'd be cool, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that'd earn me. Running is your thing, yeah. Yeah, running is your thing, isn't it? You, yeah, well, I do a bit. I, I do a bit, a bit of uh, since the uh, the knees are showing signs of wear and tear. I do a bit, a bit of uh, cycling as well now. All right, so a little bit of swimming thrown in, and you'll have yourself a triathlon. Yeah, I've done that. I've done one of those. I've got one of those in the bag. I don't know whether I'd want to do uh, the long one again, but yeah. Oof. Wow. Yeah, no, I don't I'd see. Not, not for me. Not for me. I don't like running. That, that's the first hurdle. I don't mind cycling and swimming, but running, no. It shows, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> fuck that. Oh, dear me. <laughs> you go He's running, though, Gareth, don't you? I, I, I do jog a little bit, um, only to try and lose some weight more than anything else and do a bit of exercise during the winter. So I do about five or six miles a week. I don't do much. God, I find it boring. You know, I need really it can be. You're right. It can be boring. I've, I've got yeah. to have a partner. I've got to have somebody to run with. I can't, I can't run on my own. You know, I wouldn't, I would, my, 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 the lad I run with, he, he's a real serious runner. He goes out and does 12 miles and stuff like that. And he's, he, he will go out on his own, but I, I just don't have the inclination to just get ready and go out on my own. If I've got to meet him and then go running. And, you know, if he, if he wasn't there, I'd just walk home. Oh, I'd have I, to pay, I, I'd have to pay somebody it. to chase me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way I, I'm going to run. <laughs> I knew a guy that told his wife he was on a, a, a fitness kick and he used to go out in his running gear, jog around the corner to the pub, have a couple of pints, then run back. And as soon as he came through the door, he'd open a can of beer and take a drink of it and say, oh, I needed that. So that it could mask the smell of the beer. Uh, <laughs> oh she God. couldn't understand why we were putting on about half a stone a month. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Uh, guy, 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 guy we're training every night. <laughs> See, that's the opposite of that. Anyway, right. So, well, obviously running doesn't pay the bills. So uh, print and print marketing, etc. has to. So tell us a bit about Claremont and what you guys do. Yeah, so um, Claremont, Print, print, a very core with a print uh, company, so we put ink on paper. But we do, uh, we do a lot more as well. So we, we do uh, lately we've uh, expanded into signage and and all those kind of things. So we can do the whole package for people. But we see ourselves more as a what we'd call a marketing services provider. So you know we can even do things like we can help people with you know um, digital marketing, such as SEO and pay per click campaigns and email marketing, and we can bring those into print campaigns as well mm. through something called uh, Transmedia. So, we're, you know, I suppose at our heart, we're helping people get the message across and grow their businesses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the things that, that uh, I noticed that you do is um, direct mail marketing as well. Yeah. And yeah, that's kind of our, making... Our Lego houses. It's making a bit of a, a resurgence, isn't it, the old um, direct mail? Yeah, well, the advice I'd give to anybody if you if you're experimenting with it, I mean, you can you can pay someone like me to do it, but you know, just just experiment. We we did one of our most impactful campaigns. We built some Lego houses and sent them out sent them out to people in the property industry because we wanted to talk to them, and we personalised them. We put stickers that we we've got that luxury because we're a printer, and we yeah. put the stickers on and we put the little for sale signs on with with, with their business logo, and they loved it. You know, there's, there's not one of those that I've sent out and they haven't taken my call. I, I can't tell you they've all led to business. Um, but it's been a great way of starting the conversation. And, yeah. You know, ultimately, that's what that's what marketing's about. So open a, starting a conversation with someone that, that could buy from you. Yeah. I think the, the thing that I'd say is that the, the print marketing that's coming through my door at home now 
is a much higher quality than it was 15 to 15 years yeah. ago because yeah. I think yeah. people people are spending good money on it to get people to read it because there's so there's, there's a lot less of it now than there was yeah. whereas before yeah. there was every every day you got loads you know now you get probably one lit twice a week but it's high quality yeah yeah it's interesting it's interesting as as, as the, the, the the become more marketing channels you know so you think about like the, the, the internet video marketing uh, you know sms email all of these things you know the, the, there's been a bit of dilution so you know, people have put the budget from some print into into the other channels but what they are doing is they're making the print more imp impactful mm. and you know it, it really does to be honest, it's only ever going to work if, it, if, it, if it's targeted well. So if it's you, you've got half a chance of somebody being in your market, <clears throat> but also it's got to cut through the noise. Excuse me, <clears throat> it's, it's got to cut through the noise because there's a lot of people out there with, with you know messaging and, and having great offers, and you can great copy, a bit of ingenuity, and just you know doing something a bit different is is the way to do it. And, and, and personalization is a, a massive thing as well. You know, yeah. I, I saw a great campaign a couple of years ago where the, um, I think it was Sky TV had put and they put the people's um, road name on the on the on the sign on the front. You know, and it was it was really cool. You know, it was just uh -huh. it, it, my mate had it on his sort of um, on his mantelpiece for a while. It just um, an interesting thing. Mind you, my mate's particularly sad, so <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure that counts for everybody. <laughs> are, but, you, are, you, are you designing all this for your clients as well? Then are they coming to you with a brief and saying, "Look, we've got this product, or we've got this idea, we, we need to do that." And then are you going away and putting all that together for them and coming back with them some ideas, or are you are you you contracting that out, or are you doing it all in house within Claremont? Yeah, so we do we do do it all in house. I mean, we, it's a bit of a mixed bag. So we still work with with agencies. I mean, some of the, the so we've done some great campaigns with agencies. So they've come to us with a creative, and they've just needed somebody to provide the the manufacturing of the of the piece. We did um, a campaign with an agency in Leeds, and it was personalised pizza boxes. And you know, the, the the messaging was something like, "Do you want a piece of the action?" or "You know, do you want a slice of the profit?" or you know, that kind of thing. It was, it was really really good. And then they also sent out um, some. Empty boxes and sit with a tea bag in. Well, sorry, they're, they're all by a tea bag. But there was a picture of a mug on the front. It said, "Claim your free mug," and it generated so many calls. Yeah. And it wasn't because people were saying, "I want to claim my free mug." They were phoning <laughs> to say, "Where's my mug?" <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. because I, I thought it should be in there. And this guy said, "I don't care," because they're phoning my rep to, to to have a conversation. So yeah. So we, but we but to answer your question, yeah, we we can do a lot of in house. We can do the copy. We can come up with the ideas and the creative as well. So yeah, yeah, we yeah. We, we can help people with that. Brilliant. It's good. It's very good. Um, and and some of the ideas, like you say, some people are coming up with is really really quite uh, inventive. I, I I actually one time wanted to get in with a particular client over in Burnley, um, and I tried everything, and I wrote a letter because somebody said wow. write him a letter. I wrote I wrote a handwritten letter. And when I phoned, he went, "Okay, you've got my interest." Yep. It is amazing with that, just that little quirk, you know, that was obviously just one, so it was easy to write a handwritten letter. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't want to write a handwritten letter to a thousand people, but you know what I mean? But those, like the Lego and stuff like that that you come up with is really good. It's really good. And, but that's the point, guys, you don't need to write it to a thousand people. You, you, you need to be really targeted about who it is you, you, you want to you speak exactly. to. And I, I wrote a book on, on print marketing, and one of the things I said in there is write a letter. You know, you, yeah. you don't have to spend you know, 10 grand on fancy brochures and, you know, and, and personalized boxes, just, you know, get some, get something on, the, on someone's desk that's, yeah. that's well thought through and well worded and has an offer that, that, that speaks, speaks to them. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 you're, you're right. And a lot of people though, they go out there, they buy a thousand flyers and they basically start pushing them through doors and all the rest of it. And, you know, it's, it's, it's more of a shotgun approach rather than an actual thought out marketing plan which is obviously yep. what you guys do for your clients is like, oh, well, let's yep. sit down. Who, who do we really want to talk to? You know? Uh, of just exactly. And, 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 and don't get me wrong, those things work. I mean, we did a campaign some years ago for a, a dentist. They had opened an NHS dentist in Doncaster um, and they'd picked absolutely the right spot. There's no NHS dentists around. They were open for new appointments. All the other ones were stacked out. They spent about four or five grand on this campaign, including delivery. Um, and the phone rang off the hook. Yeah, it rang off the hook. Yeah. Um. So, so it does work, but it, but it's usually a combination. You know, it's, it's like the yeah. seven touches, and you'll know about this in marketing. You know, yeah. it's a combination of that thing. So, if you're B two B, you're probably going to need to do something a bit more bespoke. If you're yeah. B two C, as long as you've got you've done your market research right, 
um, you can you can probably do something that's a little bit more yeah. mass marketed, a bit more generic. All comes down to the planning. Indeed, it does. So, yeah. So 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 well, you you also have a, a portal, don't you? We do, yeah. So we do a lot of business through through our, our portal. So that, that's really where so, so we brand the portal for the for the client. So we typically with financial institutions and estate agents and people that work from multiple sites. So we one customer that's got a couple of hundred sites on there. Um, and it's really so you, you design the template once, so you design the business card, the marketing asset, leaflet, poster, whatever. Um, and then the, the the portal user logs in and puts their own details on. So that might be the phone number, their email, their yeah. you know their, their specific call to action. Yeah, and it's just it saves people a lot of time, keeps them on brand, keeps them compliant, which is a big thing obviously in those those sectors um, because you only have to approve it once and you, you, yeah. you lock down the uh, you lock down the compliant side so that the, the advisors can't make spurious claims about what they can and can't make you. Yeah, that, that'd be ideal for franchises and stuff like that, isn't it? Because the franchise holder can create the create do all the creative and get all the but then the franchise holders use to utilize your portal so they're all on the same brand message. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks. You, you're doing my job there for me, Gareth. Yeah, right. So the, one, one of the big one of the big uh, we, we work with um, a, a national national mortgage um, advisory company, um, and they're a franchise operation. So that's that, that's how that's how they operate. But yeah, it's absolutely ideal for them. Really? Because of course, the power of the, the power of the fran franchise is the system that they've got and the recognition of the of the brand. So they, they, they want to maintain that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 They um, certainly don't want it diluted by people trying to do their own thing. No. Yeah. You you, you two guys both know a guy called Tim Bradley from Impulse, um, and he, he introduced me to a word. He introduced to many, he used many words that, that Tim but rather eloquently, but one in particular he were, were, used was brandalism. Don't allow them to commit brandalism, and I think yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I have, totally. to, I have to credit Tim for that. Yeah, so true because they can do. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and it can, you know, just one bad, one bad mistake can ruin a brand. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's I mean, been seen time and time. Shockers. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's, you, you, you've got to look at the franchise, the, the 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 king and queen of franchises, McDonald's, and at the end of the day, one of the things that they were very the reason that they are who they are is the control that they put over the brand and over the message that they were putting out there, um, yeah. including the product, you know, where it's two pickles per and all the rest of it. And they have, they actually have inspectors. There's my ideal job. McDonald's inspector. Yeah, McDonald's inspector. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be 87 stone. Oh, I actually, I, a quick story, right? slightly sidetracking, but I was in Gosport. I was on a course down in the Navy base there. And basically we went to McDonald's and they said, would you mind waiting? And we were, we were at Y and they said, the meal's on the house if you wait. Because um, we've got an inspector come in. And it was about five of us and we said yeah right we'll go over there and we ordered nearly everything on the menu because now it was free <laughs> um and, and we went and we sat down and we waited we waited about half hour because they were getting ready for this inspector and this guy came in and we were looking on in awe this guy came in and he went up he got his meal he went and he sat down and he had a little notepad and he opened it and, it, and all the rest of it and he like checked it checked it he didn't really eat anything and then he chucked it all away and left I'm like, I want his job apart from I would eat it. <laughs> Partially bulimic, you see. I would just basically, <laughs> I just keep eating McDonald's all the time. <laughs> I'd be Mr. Cream, sir. Uh, 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 I, worked out, I worked out in Turkey for some time um, with, uh, well, I used to work for MS, and uh, they they give you a daily food allowance. And at the time, I was like early, early 20s. And I, I worked out that if I ate McDonald's instead of eating in the hotel restaurant every day, um, I could, I could you know, save enough money to fly my girlfriend out. So I did just, I did just that, and I could oh, wow. not look at McDonald's for about a year after coming back. <laughs> Super lovely. Like, oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> twenty odd years old and going, oh, oh, it's all right. it's yeah, pass. It. It's oh, coming. it'll yeah, pass. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, it's just a bit of tingling. <laughs> Yeah, not 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 great. Oh, not just great. Look that out of the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very yeah. enterprising, though, John. Might have ruined your health, but very enterprising. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she she appreciated. I didn't I didn't tell her I'd paid for it with my uh, with my good health. <laughs> you just couldn't go up the stairs behind her. 
that's it. Yeah, bit of a disappointing <laughs> week for both of us. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> oh dear. Oh god. But yeah, but again, yeah, back to Brandonism. Yeah, because it, it has ruined um, some franchises where they've been not strict enough and stuff like that. But the portal that you've got obviously gives them full control over everything that happens. Which is quite cool. I think. I think it's. I think to be fair, it's. It's, it's unlikely to to bring a, a franchise to its knees, but but it's de- it'll definitely stifle two things: growth and profitability. Mm. Because yeah. you know, if you've got a highly recognisable, consistent brand, you, you're going to be able to command um, a, a, a small premium for, for that. Um, yeah. And and also, you know, in terms of growth and recognition, that that all helps because it's if it's consistent. If it's not consistent, people are not quite sure mm-hmm. whether is it the same brand or is it not. And um, you know, I'm going to get the same thing that I got in the the, the other city. No. Yeah. So, or if I go to that yeah, franchise, will I get it cheaper? Yeah, but, you're not exactly, consistent yeah. there. So are you going to be consistent in price? It's a bit like The Apprentice. Yeah. Retail on this is going to be four hundred pounds. Right. Okay. It's four hundred pounds. Will you take twenty quid? Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, the some, uh, there's, there's some remarkable examples of business uh, acumen on, on on that program. Oh, there is. I, I've not watched this season. I, I I've stayed away from it because I, I watched the first one and it really no. really made it. Have you have you been watching? Have you watched it, Gareth? I, I've 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 watched it. Yes, you've, oh, missed, you've missed nothing. There's been there's been some challenging people on there. Yeah, I, I think I, the, the, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how far wide this uh, this TV goes, but the, one of the main reasons I've stopped watching it is because I started to follow Alan Sugar on Twitter, and he is a vile individual, really? absolutely vile. Yeah, he's horrible. He's just such a nasty, bitter. Is really? uh, yeah, oh, yeah. He's, he's absolutely abhorrent. <clears throat> if you really? follow, just follow him on Twitter and see. It. Yeah, he's, he is. He's ab- yeah, is is a rotten. Is there nothing nice just, to just, say just, about just, anything? Yeah, it just seems really nasty. If you oh. want to see a real Twitter battle, you just follow him and Piers Morgan. Exactly. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not a fan of Piers Morgan. No, neither am I. But but but, but some of the, the 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 fights he wades into, you just think, you know, is is that guy in the pub? Is that is that guy in the pub that's always got something to say that's going to yeah. get you into trouble? And he's so yeah. small, he's going to get you punched, and he's going to walk out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh so, dear. Yeah. Well, no, that's I've why got, I don't watch it. I've never, I've never really thought about Alan Sugar to be honest with you. I just see him on the program, and it's, it's clearly all staged. Um, yeah, of course, it is. You know, we we do video. I know how the system works. Um, personally, I reckon that they look at the business plans before they actually do anything, and they they say, well, that'll be a successful business, or that'll work, and then that person probably wins. Well, I think they have to do that, don't they? Which which yeah. makes a mockery of the old the old thing. Yeah. Yeah, your 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 ideas. Really, you've done really well. You've got through the competition. Let's look at your business plan. Oh, you want to invent the wheel? Okay, um, you know that kind of thing. It, it just wouldn't make sense that the candidate that gets through would be then have an awful business plan. They've always got something which is tangible, like recruitment or web or this or that. You know. So, but the only thing I can say about it is. If you want to find out if you're a pretentious knob, apply. And if you get on, you are. You know? <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. they are all pretentious idiots. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. I get the sense that men and most of them are recruited for TV, not for business. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Because the producers yeah. are sat there going, interview this person. They've got really good business acumen. They really know what they're talking about. And they're really nice personality. Right. Well, they go in the no. You know, yep, yes, he yep. was a complete. He was a complete egotistical idiot who thought that basically he was as good as Alan Sugar. Yeah, put him on. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway, right. we're going off topic. Let's let's, let's get back on topic. Let's let's get on to questions then. Okay, so um, going back to when you were younger, what advice would you give your younger self? Don't eat McDonald's. Yeah, <laughs> exactly that. Yeah, probably something along those lines, Gareth. Yeah, I think just just uh, just watch what you're eating because that's going to take some shifting when you're in your forties. Yeah, that's actually very true. And it only gets worse as you get older, John. Let me tell you, when you get into your fifties, oh. it gets even harder. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I I realised that I must have been around like maybe forty five when I started realising ah wait a minute this don't go anywhere now. <laughs> I'm doing what I've always done and I'm eating what I've always eaten. Yeah, I think I think the other thing I'd say to myself is, I think you've got to, in order to do the stuff that are difficult in in, in life, you know, the the, the make the tougher decisions, 
you've got to believe in the end, you know, and, mm. and it's all right. People say, you know, have, have a view of the end. You've got to really believe that it's possible. And, uh, you know, like when, when you're younger, I think it, you kind of go through the motions a little bit. You're doing, you're doing these things and, you know, you, you, and then the really tough stuff, come. you're faced with the really tough stuff and the harder to do because you don't believe that, necessarily believe that they're worth it. Not with everything, of course, but. So yeah, that's you, the only thing I'd say. I'd you, give you've, got, you've definitely got to start these things with the end in mind, as the saying says, isn't it? You know, you've got yeah, to know that's what it. the goal yeah. is. Well, I, I read I read that book when when I was the younger the younger John Conroy. You know, that's that's um, Stephen Covey, isn't it? One of the yeah. Seven Habits. Yeah. Um, and and I read it, and I think it was it was fifteen years before it twigged. Yeah. <laughs> which, which is you know, sorry, beginning with the end in mind, but you've got to believe that the end's possible. I, yeah. I, read, I read it because somebody told me to, but I don't really believe it until yeah. you, you start to live it, and then you do. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I agree with yeah. that because a lot of these these self help books and stuff. I was, I was at a networking event recently, and they said, "Oh, what self help books do you read?" and all the rest of it. I said, "None, not anymore." When I first started in business, people went, "Oh, you got to read this, you got to read that," and you know the Seven Habits and all this, that, and the other. And I'm buying these books and I'm reading them, but I'm not, I'm not reading them if you know what I mean. I'm kind of just going through the words, thinking this is what I need to... But like you say, once you start then internalising and thinking for yourself, you start going, hang on a minute. And then you start coming up with the stuff that's in the books that you could say is subliminally there, but at the end of the day, I think it's just experience yeah. teaching you these yeah. things, you know? So, yeah. yeah. You do yes, stuff... And you're right about to be careful what you eat, because when you get to 30... I found that I was like, yeah, my, metabol my metabolism's fine. And uh, yeah. And then, um, yeah. Slowly but surely it creeps on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> two things that two things that go at that age are your metabolism and your resistance to hangovers, I found. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're now they're now two days rather than a couple of hours. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. The, the problem is I'm 52. I'm a 52-year-old man with the thirst of an 18-year-old. That's the bloody problem. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be a perfect storm right there. It really is. So you, you've you had, what, 20 years with Claremont now, and you obviously you've owned it for yeah. a, a good period of that. So what's been your biggest learning experience while you've been there and in, in business itself? I think... <laughs> I think the... Bad on that. I think that's probably the, 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 the same the same sort of thing. You know, you've just got to you've just got to knuckle down and 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 believe that what you're doing is the right thing. You know, and, and you, can, you can have all sorts of like conflicting um, thoughts and, and and commentary, and sometimes you just know it to be right and just do mm. it and take the risk and you know and and if it's wrong, you know, you're at the helm, you pay the price. Um, mm. Yeah, I think I think that, that that's probably the thing. You know, whenever I've wishy washed and dilly dallied, like I did on the answer to this question, um, it's cost me, and it's cost you know others as well. You know, in in, in my team. Whereas yeah. if if once I know it to be right, and you, and I think you learn to listen to your gut. Once you know it to be right, do it. Yeah. yeah the, the other thing is like kind of testing and measuring as you go. Um, yeah. Don't be afraid. Don't be frightened to try things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You can always shelve it, can't you? You know, if you try a project and you say, right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We're going to gather go at it. We're going to have six mm. months at it. If it don't work, we can shelve it. Yeah, but yeah. I'm going at it because I want it to work, and this is how I believe it's going to work. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And guys, right there, you know, like like to, to test and measure things. In the early days, I would just I would shotgun, you know, everywhere. I'd have a go at anything. But um, but I think once you start to learn to, okay, so we do this and we'll be consistent at it and we'll do it, and then if it works we'll either refine it or, or do more of it. Or if it doesn't work, we'll either refine it or stop doing it. And, yeah. and, and, but you can only do that if you've got a, if you've got yeah. a reasonable measure and, you know, use some KPIs and. Yeah. Fa failure, failure is a great teacher. Yeah. You're not kidding. Yeah. 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 It, it, failure is a really good teacher, you know, um, and, and, and testing and measuring is the only way to, to really work out whether you, because if you're failing consistently and you don't actually realize then. Okay. Yeah. Try going on the apprentice. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the next career move. So what does the future hold for Claremont then over the next 12, 18, two years kind of thing? 
Well, we're going through a process at the moment of uh, of really heavily systemizing the business. So, and, and I don't what well, I don't mean I, we're not trying to create a, a robotic enterprise because you, you can probably mm. tell people well, you guys know me, uh, you, you know that I'm not a particularly um, uh, systematic guy. But what what is it? What I what I found is the way that I do things and the way that Mark does things. The, the customer will get a great experience because you know Mark's great with customers, uh, just as I, I hope I am. Um, but it's different. And yeah. the problem with it, with it being different is then there's only me and Mark. So when we become to, when we start to think about scaling and and re, and training people and, and and onboarding people, it's difficult because you're trying to get them to be like either me or Mark, and frankly not, and nor should they be. So we you know we put in lots of systems in place, and the, the best example I can give you of this is uh, we got some new kit during lock, well 23rd of March 2020. We invested our biggest ever investment in Claremont, um, and. It, it, there's three, three operators on the machine there's three people in studio and we've got three people effectively in the sales department so um and i said to the guys that it's, it's, it's important to do it right but there's only one way to do it right because at the moment we've got three people multiplied by three people in studio with three different operators you've got 27 possible outcomes and only one of those is the best 20 of them might be good but only one of them is the best and that's what we've got to nail and we do that through and, and we've 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 invested a lot of time and energy in, in this over the last um, the last three or four months. So you know that's where we want to be. And, and another year's time, we want to have a, a systemized business that we can, that it's easy to recruit, train, you know, improve our performance, and of course, test and measure the the, the systems that we've got. Yeah. Are, you, are you doing this just internally? Or are you doing this through one of the accreditations like ISO? How are you, how are you doing it in, in in your business? No. For, for for the time being, we're just doing it internally. Um, I mean, ISO is always something that's banded about in print, you know, because you've got you've got the quality standard, you've got the environmental mm. standard, and you've got the the, the, the specific uh, colour standard. Well, it, it's never been such a priority for us because we don't tend to deal with massive corporates that that, that demand it. You know, we, we none of our work is contracted. Yeah. So all of our work is on word of mouth, doing a great job, and people coming back to us for more. So we we decided that. That's the standard that we'll. That's where we'll hold the bar. Is that the, the test is? You know, if we do a good enough job, folk come back to us. Um, and and and. But as we grow, we might we might need to incorporate some of those other things. Yeah, it's it's, it's a matter of putting it down on paper, then, isn't it? You know, that's the. This is the process, yeah. and we're writing it down. So the next person that comes in, here's the process guide. You know, it's not word yeah. of mouth. Then it becomes a, a fixed document that you. And that's that's what ISO does for you, isn't it? It's, it becomes document. Yeah. It, it doesn't, and we're ahead of that, so we're doing that. And it's not just me and Mark and and, and the, t the team in the office that are doing it. You know, it's, it's everybody that are, that are writing a system. You know, but this ain't gone so well. Okay, well, write write a system that, that's yeah. going to make sure it's yeah. that, that tells everybody what the best way to do it, and everybody will revert to that that as a system. And and if it's wrong, then we'll know what it is that we're doing that's wrong. Because at the moment, we don't know if you don't have a system, everybody's doing it differently. You don't know what's wrong, so you, therefore, how do you improve that? Great that you get the teams buy in as well. You know, everybody's got to be involved. You know, no, no. Just... I said the, no, I said the, I said the team were doing it. I didn't say they bought it. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> no, 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 you're right. But the vast, the vast, the vast majority of them are. Um, some of them, it's been a little bit. You know, you know what it's like. You know, a guy's done a job for twenty years, and he's saying, "Why the hell do I need to write this down?" I'm saying, "You're not writing it down for you. You're writing it down for them." Yeah, that, yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that's the key, and, and the frustrations that you feel when they don't do what do it as well as you. But you know, what, what, they, what they I'm trying to get from that, little John, you're you're not going into the team and saying you're going to do it this way. You're getting the oh, no. banging from no, them to say they do it. They do it their way. What's the best way of doing it? You now tell yeah. everybody else. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm a firm believer. Anybody that'll work for you, tell me that. I'm I'm not sort of authoritarian in that way. I don't I don't pretend to know how to run a printing press or you know I, I've got some ideas about the best way to operate that that, that business. Um, uh, uh, module, but you know, those are the experts. You know, yeah. all of our printers are pretty trained. There's not one of them that haven't been in the business for for more than twenty years. So, what am I going to tell them about how to run a printing press? Yeah. True, um, exactly. So, going going on to, um, we always ask our, our guests to tell our viewers what's the best website tools, productivity apps, things like that that you use in business regularly. That work for you. Can I can I say can I mention two? Yeah, by all means. Yeah, yeah. You can mention as many as you want. Thank you. Well, I, I, only, I, I can only think of two, <laughs> unless unless one comes up as, as I've chatted. Um, well, I, just let, well as part of the systemization, I've got really into Google uh, Google Sheets and Google Docs, just so there's a you've got a place that we can share, collaborate. Mm. You know, everybody can pile things on there and um, and we can review them, annotate them. So that, they've been an absolute game changer for us, and, and also in terms of you know marketing assets. 
So we might have some templates for the best email to write or LinkedIn introductions and those kind of stuff. We share them and, and, and we could all write comments. So that's been great. And then we mentioned earlier when Gareth was talking about um, self-help books. I'm, I, I, I've read a few self-help books. I'm a big fan of um, sort of business books, though, that, that are more structural rather than, rather than uh, I don't know what to call it, airy fairy but you know, Mental. Mental. Rather, rather than theoretical. I, 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 prefer, yeah. I prefer the, the, the practical rather than the theoretical. And a great way to, to, to get through a load of those or at least find the ones that you think are any good is Blinkist, the, the, the app that uh, truncates um, books for you. So 15 to 20 minutes, you can do them on audio or you can read them. And it pretty much just gives you the highlights of the book. So seven, you know, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits, it'll give you the seven habits and a brief description about each one of the habits and what, what, what the principles are. And then, of course, you go buy the book if you decide to, to read more. But it's, uh, that, that's a, a really good app. Wow, I've not we've not heard that one. That's the first I've not one. Heard that one. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad I said that. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's a good one. That's, yeah, it's quite highly unique. recommended. That's that's great because the, the worst thing you can do is go and spend ten quid on a book and then realise that halfway into it's too hard to read. You know, it's just just too heavy. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and also you know, there's some of these that you can get the principle of the the the, the matter from 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 the blink. Um, but 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 like you say, if if it's something that you think, yeah, I'm intrigued by that or I want to know more, then you go buy the book and and you're away. Very there's, there's nothing worse than a 50 page book dragged out into 500 pages. No, that's it. There's a lot of those about. And there's there are loads about. of them about. Somebody, yeah. will, I think, t- somebody will make 10 bullet points and then write an entire novel about it. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. no, no, not for me. I like fiction. I'm, I'm a, I, I like fiction because it's escapism. I'm not a big fan of uh, self help and all that. No, um, I'll watch videos well, like uh, Simon Sinek and all the rest of it. But my, my one of my favorites is Hans Roslin, but he doesn't do self help. He does uh, fact research, statistical facts and stuff, um, right, which I find right. fascinating. So yeah. it's not even self help. Well, that's it. That's brilliant. That's been really good. Thank you very much. Um, oh, thanks, guys. I really time. enjoyed that. I'm glad, and uh, you're obviously off somewhere because you're in your van. So we'll I let am, you get yes. on. Are you well, off been, somewhere been, fascinating, or are you just... Well, actually, no, to be fair, I've uh, I've been caught between... Uh, the, the reason I'm in this is because I, I went to the gym, and the reason I went to the gym is because I was having my ears lowered at half eight, and there was no point in going to the office. So now I'm on my way to the office. Now you're on your way to the office. <laughs> You've got to stop off at McDonald's on the way. Yeah, stop, that's Stop it, yeah. off at McDonald's for a breakfast on the way. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't tempt me, I pass one. <laughs> So that's it. Thank you very much for watching, anybody. And uh, basically, thank you, John, for coming on. Um, and uh, we thank do you. one hour networking on Wednesdays, breakfast, eight till nine, and lunchtime is 12.30 to 1.30. Fridays is our coffee morning. And this Thursday, are you going to come to the quiz, John, tomorrow between one and two o'clock at Natopia? Oh, ju- ju- during the day, uh, oh, do you know, my, my, di- my, my, di- my diary is on the other page, so I'll have to check. It's all right. Um, it's one till two o'clock. It's in Netopia. It's uh, the virtual world. And uh, the theme is TV programs. And it's a great fun way to network. So, so, so by it. quiz, do I have to know stuff and then answer questions? No, well, you're, you're, a team a team. Team. you're a team of force. You're all right. You're all right. I'm going to say, because in, in that case, the answer is no, I'm busy. <laughs> no, you'll be in a team of four. All right. Um, and you basically then... Um, I'll be doing the quiz master in my on my own tomorrow because Gareth is having a day off because it's it's, it's it's a special day and he's going out. Good for it's you, Gareth. It's my birthday, so I'm having a day off. I didn't want to say well, that. Now people know many happy returns for tomorrow. Thank you very much, John. So I've taken so much abuse off Mr. James this morning. Thank you, John. That's very kind. And I'm, I just keep rubbing in the fact that you've left me on my own to do all the bloody work as usual. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. <laughs> we will see you. Later. Say bye now. Bye. Bye.